In this video we're going to do another example of solving equations with radicals and this is another problem that's a, a little more complicated, involves some more steps. So let's uh, recall the, the steps for solving. First we want to isolate the radical which means get it by itself on one side of the equal sign. Then we're going to take both sides to the power of the index of that radical. In this case we have a square root so we're going to square both sides. Then we'll uh, solve for the variable and check our solutions. So let's get started. Isolate the radical. Is the square root by itself on one side? No it's not because we have this minus x. Now that minus x is not underneath the square root in this problem. So in order to get that radical by itself we need to move that x to the other side. So we're going to add x. Okay now we have the square root of 2x plus 15 equals 6 plus x or x plus 6 doesn't really matter. I'll just write x plus 6. So now we've taken care of step 1. We isolated the radical. We got it by itself on one side of the equal sign. So now we can take both sides to the power of the index. The index, remember, is this little number here, which is not written when it's a square root. And that index is 2. So we need to take both sides to the power of 2, which means square both sides. Now on the left-hand side, the squared and the square root are going to cancel each other out. So we just end up with 2x plus 15. That's awesome. That's what we wanted. We wanted that square root to go away. That's why we're squaring both sides, to get rid of that square root. Now on the right-hand side, we're left with a binomial squared. Again, I've talked about this in the last video, don't make the mistake of taking your x plus 6 squared and just going x squared and 6 squared. That's not right. x plus 6 squared actually means x plus 6 times x plus 6. And if you're at this point in your, in your math, then you know to solve this, you have to distribute and FOIL, as some people call it, um, x into both terms of the second parentheses. So you have x squared plus 6x, and then 6 into both terms of the second parentheses, which gives you another 6x plus 36. So we end up with x squared plus 12x plus 36. So if you square this way, you're going to lose your middle term, and it's going to mess you all up. You don't want to do that. All right, so x plus 6 quantity squared is x squared plus 12x plus 36. Okay, take both sides to the power of the index. Did it. Now we're on step three. Solve for the variable. Solve for x. What you should notice here is you have an x squared. And when you have an x squared, it's a different method of solving. You don't just get your x's on one side and your numbers on the other because you have an x squared. You can't really do that. So what you have to do here is set it equal to zero and then see if it factors. Let's see what happens. So I'm going to minus 2x from both sides and minus 15, that'll give me a 0 on the left, which is what I want. Now I have 0 equals x squared plus 10x plus 21. We have a quadratic equation here, and the way you solve a quadratic equation is set it equal to 0, see if it factors. If it doesn't factor, we're going to have to use the quadratic formula, but I think we're in luck here. I think it does factor. Let's take this up here. And it's where we've got some room. 0 equals x squared plus 10x plus 21. To factor this, since there's only a 1 for your a term, there's only a 1 for the coefficient on the x squared, you can simply ask yourself, are there two numbers that multiply to be 21 and add to be 10? And the answer is yes. Those numbers are 7 and 3. Positive 7 and a positive 3. And then we need our x here and our x here to give us our x squared. So if you FOIL this out, you would get x squared plus 3x plus 7x, which gives you your 10x, plus 21. So that works. Okay, so now we have this. And then you, we have two things that are multiplying together to be 0. So either that first factor has to be 0 or the second factor has to be 0. In order to make the first factor 0, x would have to be negative 7. In order to make this second factor 0, x would have to be negative 3. 
So if we put negative 3 back in here, this would make this factor 0 times whatever would give you a product of 0. If you make x equal to negative 7, you put it in for both these x's, it's going to make the first factor 0 and the second factor something else, but it won't matter because when you multiply them you'll get 0. So both these would give you uh, a solution to this quadratic equation. So we've solved for our variable. Now we have to check the solutions because a lot of times when you square both sides and especially when you come up with two solutions, one of them might not work. You get what's called an extraneous root. So the way that you check the solution, you have to go all the way back to the original equation. Don't check it somewhere along the way. Make, well, you could check it after you added the x over, but you have to check it pre-squaring before you square both sides. Just check it from the beginning and you won't have to worry about all that. Okay, so we have 2 times x plus 15 minus x equals 6. We're going to take our x value and put it in. So let's start with um, negative 7. So I'm going to put my negative 7 where my x was. Negative 7. Notice I have a minus in my equation and a negative in my answer. So I need both those symbols there. And let's work it out and see what happens. So we get negative 14 plus 15 under the root plus 7 equals 6. Negative 14 plus 15 is square root of 1 plus 7 equals 6. This isn't looking good. 1 plus 7 equals 6. I don't think so. So that guy is out. He does not make the equation work, and we have to throw him out. Sorry, negative 7. You are not a solution. Let's check... 3, negative 3. Let's get rid of this. And we'll change our negative 7 to a negative 3 and see what happens. 3, negative 3. Okay, so what do we get here? Let's see, we have negative 6 plus 15. Oops, I said 15. And I wrote 19. I don't know why. 15. There we go. Minus a negative is a plus 3 equals 6. So we have the square root of 9. This is looking good. Square root of 9 is 3. Plus 3 equals 6. Yes, it does. Wonderful. So negative 3, you are the lucky winner today. You are our solution. And uh, there you have it. Check the solution. We got the one that works and threw out the one that didn't. And we have solved this equation.